Hey guys, I just wanted to say that I think that I'm <clears throat> not going to go through with that prison ministry idea at this moment with my old friend who I was writing to in jail because I got another letter today and um, <clears throat> I just wasn't really too crazy about this letter, a little bit disappointed again. So I, write, I wrote this person <clears throat> for like a year uh, when I first started on YouTube when he was in prison, and um, towards the end of the letters, <clears throat> I wasn't really feeling like much was going through, um, felt like he kind of got into some false Christianity, like uh, he was talking about how he liked Rick Warren and stuff, and I just felt like he never really got converted, he wasn't really <clears throat> taking a lot of stuff that I was saying to him, and uh, this letter that I just got recently just reminds me exactly of that. And so, you know, I wrote him a few letters, three or four, and uh, gave him some books. And the last book that I gave him was kind of a test in a way. I gave him uh, John MacArthur, Hard to Believe, which I think is a really great book. Actually, I've only read through the first chapter, but I've already learned a lot just from the first chapter. And uh, I'm going to teach, you know, what I've learned on here. Um, and I've also got The Gospel According to Jesus. So these are all John MacArthur's Lordship Salvation books. And uh, I'm guessing they're all really good. He has a couple others I want to get to, like the Gospel According to the Apostles. And I think there's maybe one more. But so far, Hard to Believe is an excellent book. I already read like the first chapter on my Facebook. And I want to continue reading through it before much longer. And uh, anyways, he wrote me the letter and said that, you know, pretty much he didn't really like the book. He thought John MacArthur was mean and stuff. And he said how... Uh, you know, he's like, well, you don't have to be, like, miserable to be a Christian and everything. And, well, John MacArthur is not saying that you have to be miserable to be a Christian. So that's how my friends, you know, he's getting offended by what's being said in this book. And what's being said in this book, basically, for the most part, is the true gospel is being presented. And, you know, I definitely think John MacArthur is a false teacher because he's a Calvinist and there's lots of other things that I don't agree with. But as far as the Lordship Salvation thing, you know, how he interprets some of the parables and, you know, going through the Gospels and stuff, I think he does a really good job when it comes to salvation, you know, besides his uh, Calvinist spin that, you know, only those can be saved who God chose or whatever. But, you know, he doesn't even really get into that a lot so far from what I've read, hard to believe. But anyways, I think it's an excellent book and... So I think my friend's being offended by this stuff, and I'm at the point now where it's like, I don't know if I want to write him and kind of like rebuke him and tell him, you know, that I'm about to the point to where I'm going to have to dust off my feet and walk away, or do I just dust off my feet and not write him again? So I don't know what to do, but I feel like if I write him a letter and tell him how I really feel and tell him, you know, how I really think that he hasn't really submitted to Christ yet, um, then he's probably just going to be offended by that. Or or he could, um, you know, agree and not really mean it. I just don't really have confidence now that, you know, I keep trying, keep sending, you know, big letters, uh, trying to explain things, sending him books and stuff, and it just doesn't seem like he's ready to accept the true gospel yet. So, it's unfortunate, but that's the way that it is, I think. But it doesn't really matter. That's, that's okay. Uh, I'll continue to pray for him, and uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm kind of feeling like not writing him now, and so even if I don't write him, you know, he might write me back again anyways and wonder what's going on. So, I don't know. I don't know what's better for me to do, but anyways... Oh, I'll tell you, like, one of the things that I learned and hard to believe so far, which I learned a lot of things, but one of the things is the guy who comes to Jesus and says he'll follow him, or Jesus asks him to follow him, and he says, let me bury my father. And, you know, Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. And John MacArthur says he wasn't, he wasn't waiting to attend his father's funeral, you know, out of respect for his father or whatever. He was wanting his inheritance from his father. So, you know, it's more about earthly treasures and stuff. That's why he wanted to wait to, to, for his father to be buried so he could 
get that inheritance. Okay, so and that makes perfect sense to me. And that's you know I never saw that in that, and I bet a lot of other people don't either. Uh, could be wrong though. Maybe it's just me, but just little things like that uh, he helps bring these parables and stuff to life. For the most part, I would agree with a lot of it. And um, you know, and I've learned like the parable of the tares and the wheat. Um, the wheat bears fruit and the tares don't. And that's that's the difference, you know, between the saved saints and unbelievers. The saints will bear fruit. And uh, so that's, you know, a parable that destroys the easy believism false gospel, where they'll try to say that there can be saved people who never bear fruit. It's absolutely false. Jesus said otherwise so many times, but it's really blatant in the, in the wheat and the tares. And then they'll go to the parable of the sower and they'll say that, you know, the one that's choked by thorns or whatever, that's a saved person and they never burned fruit, but that's wrong. So it's very, it's, you know, it's a very dangerous false gospel really to tell people that, to give this idea that you can um, be saved by a belief that doesn't result in a changed life. And I almost feel like that's what's happened here with my friend. You know, he talks about Jesus and stuff and you know some biblical things but I don't really see that really that real humility or you know a, a really big change I'm seeing like the exact same stuff that I saw almost maybe two years ago or so so that's just too worrisome for me and uh, I don't want to get too much discouraged over that but I really think that I'm gonna be working tomorrow I should be working before Thanksgiving and that's this Thursday so uh, I'm hoping tomorrow is Tuesday. Uh, sometimes they're slow on Mondays. That's probably why I didn't work today. But I think tomorrow I'll work, and I'm going to be grateful for that. And I uh, hope to get a boost on, on the ministry, start making videos and stuff again, teach on lots of different things. And so, you know, I'm changing my eschatology a lot. I really don't know everything yet. I'm still studying a lot. But, you know, I really think that the bodily resurrection idea that will somehow have our physical body, bodies, you know, restored in the future. I think that's a false doctrine. I think most of those passages, what we're talking about is the resurrection after death and we get a new spiritual body. Okay, there's the physical body, the old one, is destroyed. There's no purpose for that anymore. Okay. Um, but there's just lots of things like that that I'm looking into. And lots of interesting stuff and so also I don't know you know where exactly I stand on Israel you know I've studied a lot about replacement theology and I believe that it's false um, but there's other things that I haven't studied out um, I've come across this new idea that Jesus is the true Israel you know instead of Maybe instead of the church being Israel or placing Israel, Jesus is the true Israel. Um, I don't really know. So there's a lot for me to study on that, and there could be possible changes with that. But, you know, I really don't believe that the Bible teaches the rapture, as it's commonly taught, not pre-trib, not mid-trib, not post-trib, not a rapture at all. And I don't know if there's a millennial kingdom at all. I don't know if that's all symbolic for something else. Uh, that's something I have to study out, and that could take a while for me to figure that one out. But I'm pretty confident when it comes to the rapture that he's talking about the resurrection of the dead, which happens after death. It's a spiritual resurrection, not a future bodily resurrection. So, And coming upon all this stuff, it surprises me even more how much more false teaching there is out there. I mean, it's just crazy all the false teaching that's out there. But I should have some time this week to really put some, some studies together, but we'll see. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I guess I just wanted to say that the whole prison thing that I've been talking about, I think that's off for now. So, that's it. So, God bless, guys.